Section 23F discusses our anti-avoidance sections. Now, what is an anti-avoidance section again? An anti-avoidance section is when the act has been written in such a way and that they know that people can take advantage of the act and they write the act in such a way that you avoid, that they avoid, stop you from avoiding taxes. So it's an anti-way of avoiding, you avoiding taxes. So it's to stop you from avoiding taxes. Now, this section is quite often tested. Basically, what I want you to understand is that section 23F prevents the situation where the taxpayer claims the deduction for stock, so either as purchases or as closing stock, and then he never gets taxed on it. Because remember, if you go and you buy something, you get a deduction for it, and if you sell it, it will get included in gross income. So what if you buy something, but you never sell it for whatever reason? Right, then you'll just have the deduction. What if you buy something... Right? Then you'll remember, let me actually start with this, you'll remember that if you buy something you haven't sold it, usually it's included in closing stock, which you add back. Now, what if you do a situation where you claim a deduction, but it's never in closing stock? Can you see, then you're going to claim a deduction, but there's not going to be any income. And SARS has a problem with that. So, section 23F1, you need to know, and it says, where any taxpayer has doing any year of assessment incurred expenditure for the acquisition of trading stock. So if you bought trading stock, which was neither disposed of him by the end of the year, nor held it in by the end of such year, any deduction which may be allowed in respect of such expenditure shall not be allowed in such year. But such expenditure shall, for the purpose of such provisions, be deemed to have been incurred by him in the first subsequent year in which he disposed of the trading stock, or we include the trading stock in his closing stock. Or where he can show that by reason of the loss or destruction of such trading stock, in terms of which such trading stock was acquired by him, such trading stock will neither be disposed of nor held by him. Okay, so, guys, section 23F, the most common example that they use is, they say, you've got a December year end. On the 15th of December, you buy stock from England for a hundred thousand rands. At year end, the stock has not yet been received and is excluded from closing stock because you haven't received it yet. And for whatever reason, you can exclude it from closing stock. Maybe you've made a mistake from an accounting perspective, and you should have accounted it for it, and you didn't, right? I'm not talking about the correctness of accounting here. Maybe you, the risk and rewards haven't passed to you. But I want you to understand that you have not included in your closing stock. So what's the risk here? The risk is this person now goes and says, purchases, 100,000 rands, I've actually incurred the amount. And then they say, closing stock, nothing. So then you have 100,000 rands tax deduction and nothing corresponding. SARS will not allow this. They say, if you have this situation where you've incurred an expense but just not included in closing stock and you haven't sold it, because if you had sold this also, then you would have had sale and the amount there. So SARS is just concerned with a situation where you have a deduction but no income. Okay, so what SARS says is, in this situation, you may not claim a deduction, so you can't claim that. Now guys, in an exam situation, you just need to read carefully, and you'll see this also in your lecture example. If you see that the taxpayer has claimed this and they shouldn't, you will just basically say section 23F1 applies, and you will add it back, the 100,000 rand, so the net effect is null. If the taxpayer has not yet deducted it, you will just say section 23F1 applies, and there's no deduction. So you just need to react to whatever the question is. And that's it.